I held up my hands and I said, please let me hold your tears and your fears. I've got you, but actually it's the mushrooms that's got us. Like I deeply trusted it. I surrendered and trusted and had so much faith in the mushrooms and the mycelium network that's all underneath us in this beautiful, magical web. And I said, just follow the mushrooms. And uh, it was mothers and fathers and daughters and or, and children. And uh, yeah, we went through different worlds, avatar worlds, real worlds. And, uh, and that was for the seven hours. And I guess um, my practitioner said I had tears streaming down my face, but it was like I was a, just a portal because not for one second did it feel uh, dark. It felt full of joy and it felt blissful and it felt purposeful and it felt easy. Welcome to the Way of the Healer Conversations for Change podcast. I'm your host, Darieth Chisholm. Here, you'll meet some of the world's most extraordinary thought leaders and experts, iconic artists and creators, top performing athletes, successful entrepreneurs, philanthropists, spiritual teachers, shamans, healers, and many, many more. They sit with me, an Emmy award-winning TV host and former news anchor turned filmmaker and life and business coach for some powerful conversations conversations for change. What are these conversations about? Healing. Healing. Healing all aspects of our mind, body, soul, spirit, this planet, each other, and the systems and structures we're currently living in. You'll learn about topics like plant medicine and psychedelics, spirituality, conscious entrepreneurship, conscious communication, the new earth, quantum leaping, multidimensional living, pleasure, play, and sexuality, breath work, sound healing, food and supplements, and ah, there's just so much. You're just going to need to subscribe to the channel and listen. Come with me now behind the curtain to get the backstory on how and why these remarkable people heal themselves and others, how they lead, what makes them tick, what lights them up, gets them down, keeps them going, and what they believe is the way of the healer. So let's go. Plant medicine, psychedelics, and cannabis have really helped me deepen my meditation practice and morning routine. And while you don't necessarily need our plant natural allies to assist you in meditation, I find that with meditation, I'm able to have more clarity, direction, purpose, and allow divine guidance and wisdom to flow through me. Stillness and quieting the mind allows you to access more of who and what you truly are. And that's where you can activate more creative expression and fulfillment of your dreams. As a gift to you, my friends, I've designed a special high frequency activation to help you encode, embrace, and elevate your consciousness to ignite your creativity and passion. It's free and available for a limited time. Go to dariath.com forward slash meditations to receive a guided meditation series with journal prompts and attuned high frequency sound waves. That's dariath.com forward slash meditations. You know, this is going to be one of those podcasts that I think are going to go deep and in a lot of different directions, primarily because this is more than just a conversation about the power of plant medicine and, and how it has the potential to heal the world and, and, and what happens with humanity. But I'm having it with my friend and the friend who actually was so instrumental in, in helping me um, to discover ayahuasca and uh, various different uh, psychedelics. So thank you for being here, Michelle. Oh, thank you for having me, Daria. Really honored. Yeah, I, I, it, I can recall our times in Mexico together a few years ago when I was just asking you so many questions about psychedelics and plant medicine and, and ayahuasca. And, uh, you know, I went on this long journey of uh, you know, researching and doing things and, and to find out more for myself and my own personal healing. And then to have this come full circle in the space that we're in right now um, is to me mind blowing because so much has happened in the last two years. But I'd love if you would to begin with perhaps your your story around your most significant uh, plant medicine journey and how that has shifted your life in varying different ways. 
Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, I do appreciate our friendship so much. And of course, uh, your curiosity around it. And uh, everyone has to feel the divine call. And so, um, you know, I really appreciate when and how you did and, um, and that we're here talking, like you said, full circle. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I, I've had experience with plant medicines, various different types, uh, the, a couple that are very powerful for me, but one journey I'll speak to specifically was around um, a mushroom journey, a psychedelic mushroom journey. And uh, I, interestingly enough, I had done other very powerful uh, psych or, um, medicines, including ayahuasca and including 5-MeO-DMT and others, which were all profound in their own way. And I have learned now of the integration between all of them and how connected all of them are, uh, including with uh, Mother Earth and all sentient beings. But the most, uh, I was, for some reason, mushrooms weren't calling to me. Um, until I had a dear friend um, offer a one-on-one -on -one intensive uh, to um, to go deep with the medicine. And so I hadn't done it. Uh, I only did it recreationally, but when I did it in a very sacred set and setting um, with very specific intentions, uh, it, it, I felt very held. I felt very nurtured. And uh, it was a one-on-one -on -one, and uh, this uh, practitioner was absolutely beautiful in the way she held space uh, in a very feminine uh, way. And she, um, you know, she sang to me and uh, we set our intentions. And honestly, when I first drank the medicine and laid down, it was the first time in the 10 years of doing medicine work that I decided to completely let go of my intention. And in that, as soon as I drank the cup and I laid down, I said, I'm giving up my intention to you, mycelium, mushrooms, use me as you would like to. And for seven hours, I it was completely out of body and uh, very energetic. Um, but very visual in terms of the um, experience of it all. And the, the whole journey really was helping refugees cross borders of countries and countries and countries to their path in life and to the violet light, which meant that they had reached their ultimate path. And what all, all I did really was I held up my hands and I said, please let me hold your tears and your fears. I've got you, but actually it's the mushrooms that's got us. Like I deeply trusted, I surrendered and trusted and had so much faith in the mushrooms and the mycelium network that's all underneath us in this beautiful, magical web. And I said, just follow the mushrooms. And uh, it was mothers and fathers and daughters and or, and children. And uh, yeah, we went through different worlds, avatar worlds, real worlds. And uh, and that was for the seven hours. And I guess um, my practitioner said I had tears streaming down my face, but it was like I was a, just a portal because not for one second did it feel uh, dark. It felt full of joy and it felt blissful and it felt purposeful and it felt easy. And I just, you know, I said, I've got you. And the, and the mushrooms had all of us really, it wasn't me. I was just this guy, I guess, gateway. And so um, it was very surprising to me that the whole journey was like that yeah, for the seven and, hours. And for people who of course may have never had a journey or an experience uh, and use with plant medicine, psychedelics, um, at mushrooms, it, you know, it's so hard to put to words what the experience yes. is. And most people find it completely uh, indescribable. And yet your experience was so much that it you still, you speak about it as if it, you were actually experiencing that. And it was very clear and intentional in the direction that you took after that. Is there anything that you can share as to maybe 
why that was so clear and so impactful for you? Uh, well, of course, yes. Um, uh, I didn't know it at the time. However, five months later, uh, and I was, as I was integrating the experience, so I'll, I'll speak to that a little bit. So integration is very critical in any kind of medicine journey. And you absolutely need to have, I'm a um, very huge advocate for ensuring that there's strong integration afterwards, because it can really shake you up, right? Um, and so um, my practitioner was so beautiful and eloquent in the way that she shared because, um, you know, she talked about uncertainty in life and the mystery of every single day of our lives. And we specifically talked about motherhood. I've been on a 10 year journey towards motherhood and, and my husband and I parenthood. And she said, you know, your, your journey up to now with motherhood has been very uncertain and your journey going forward, uh, you may have planned, but it is still going to be uncertain with many twists and turns. And every single day as a, as a mother uh, and as a parent is uncertain until you take your last breath. Mm -hmm. And when she said that during the, you know, was the actual experience was pure bliss, but the integration was really difficult. And that was the first time integration had ever been difficult for me over like the 10 years of, or 15 years of doing medicine work. <laughs> so um, I, I talked to my mom about this and my mom even said, she said, you know, when I'm on my deathbed, I'm going to be caring about your well-being more than mine. Mm -hmm. And so um, that was beautiful in terms of the integration. And then what I didn't know is five months later, uh, our fertility journey led us to many different countries around the world. And at the moment, um, at that time, it had led us to Ukraine. And uh, five months later, the war broke out in Ukraine. So I, I remember calling our, my practitioner going, did the mushrooms predict this? <laughs> um, and so I felt the deep call to immediately go to Eastern Europe to support um, 25 refugees in Slovakia who are still part of my dear soul family. And, uh, and to this day, I still... Uh, I feel so connected to the medicine that I trust that it's guiding me, even when I don't know how or why or what I'm going to do. Because at that point, um, we had decided because um, of the war, we had decided that our life would be likely without children. And, um, and so I still felt the call to go and to help. So, uh, so we the experience itself was completely life altering, like being in Eastern Europe and staying there for a month at the very beginning of the war was very powerful in so many ways. I would say that I witnessed things that I would just, I think would have never even known about if I were, would have stayed in the United States. And so um, that was a really great learning experience for me. And in that process, we actually also rescued 12,000 embryos and eggs and uh, from Ukraine into Slovakia, which was a wild experience in and of itself. Um, and since the war, some good news to share is that there have been 35 new babies born as a result. So it's, okay. it's a little bittersweet on one hand because, um, you know, the war has gone on for so long. Yeah. However, these intended parents who really want, uh, really thought that they had lost all hope, um, I was already a mother. I was already a mother. Yeah. And, you know, I find it to be every time you talk about this and share this, this story, I get chills in, in so many different ways because I, 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 you know, when you talk about what you saw in your journey and this it almost was if it predicted in some way and here you find yourself later literally helping yeah. refugees and and supporting families and bringing these embryos over like just all of that is is so mystical in so many different ways and 
and we've talked about this before, but I definitely want to move into this conversation, is that part of it also perhaps was leading and guiding you into a different path. Not only just the path of awareness, but the path of seeing how vital it is, especially now in the world, to find more ways to connect and support and to, to heal and to heal. And we're not talking about just individual problems, but these are world massive issues that we're facing right now. And when right. more people can step up and be involved um, is, is when we really see change. And so let's talk about that because I think for you, you know, obviously you, you weren't expecting that. And now you find yourself right in the middle of that as well as helping so many other people in various different countries. Yeah, so I think, um, you know, there was this immediate go into action to help these families and a lot that went into that. And when I returned, I think that's when I went into my own cocoon process of really integrating what had happened. Um, because I, even though I witnessed things that were, um, were really challenging to witness, I also witnessed acts of kindness that I had never, that just blew me away. I'd never witnessed before. Mm -hmm. So, but what it did is it really opened me up to what the ecosystem of war was because in our lifetime, how would we have ever expected that there would be another war like this? And, um, and so I kind of went down the rabbit hole in terms of the ecosystem of war. It is the most profitable business in the world. And, um, and, and, also, like how deep the layers of tro a global trauma really goes with with um, with war. So it's not like a war just happened. It's moments and choices and sequence of events and layers and layers of global trauma that lead us up to various experiences and various events. And for me, I wanted to learn a lot more about that so that if if I'm really going to get involved and make serious change, it has to be at the systems level. It has to be at the root cause. And so, you know, as an example, it's I don't excuse anything that, um, you know, any hurtful harm to any human beings or mothers or children at all. However, hurt people hurt people. And so it's um, it's like peeling back the onion and I would read biographies and I would learn about the government um, and I would learn just about, you know, just all the different layers and recognize that, wow, this is a really complex problem to solve. And of course we have to, you know, do what we can to stop this now, however, and stop the bleeding basically, but also um, how do we prevent this in the future? Um, you know, everyone has a story and I really saw that and witnessed that. And I'm still learning that every single day. And honestly, it can be many different things. For me, it will probably I'm being led, I'm being called to do something more and bigger around systems change. But even if we just looked after our neighbor every day um, or checked in on our neighbors, like when I lived in San Francisco, I barely knew my neighbors. And when I was a child, I knew all my neighbors. We never locked our doors. We never, you know, we, it was, um, I don't know. It was just so different as a child, always playing outside. We didn't have social networking. So much has changed in the world. And so even if we just took it to care of our neighbors, the world would be a better place. Um, however, there is, um, there's a bigger opportunity for us as a collective to come together to really deeply look at these systems um, and look at where the root causes are and how can we actually make significant change to protect our future generations. You know, this is such an important conversation because I think so many times people want change and they think to themselves, well, who am I? How, how am I possibly going to be able to to even put a dent in the problems that we face. And I love how you just said, just check on your neighbor. Like if yeah. we all did a little bit, it all adds up. And it, 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 it really does. I mean, and, and certainly because we're facing massive global issues that sometimes people think, well, that's happening over there in that country. You know, I got my own problems over here. That's happening over there. 
but yet we're all still connected. And so to the degree that we can create even small change within our own communities and start that process, eventually, hopefully, we'll start to see that change occur on a, on a global level. Yeah, that's what I hope. And, you know, my, um, my community will say that they've noticed a change in me since the war has begun. And there's no question that there has been a change. And I'm still kind of marinating in it because, um, because I do want to be involved with other change makers and other um, influencing, like influence, uh, influencing people who do have the resources to make more powerful change. And as a result, all of a sudden in my field, there's just so much that's coming into it from uh, other countries and other entrepreneurs and other humanitarian efforts that um, maybe making an assumption that I know how to solve these things, <laughs> like just because I, I winged it and went over there and figured out how to get them a house of 25 and get the 10 children into school and furnish a house. And, you know, you just, when you're in a point of crisis, you just become resourceful. And so um, there's a reason why these experiences are coming into my field and the universe is saying is like knocking on my door going okay um you're there's a there's a deeper calling and so um yeah i i i really want to honor that and look at that closer did you know that beyond this podcast that i help busy entrepreneurs storytellers artists, creatives, and healers who might be feeling a little bit bored and burnt out and trying to figure out what to do next and what's my purpose in life, really find those answers. How? Oh, I say it's through shifting. It's just a matter of shifting your vibration and your frequency to higher states of consciousness and awareness in order to find the answers and live the life that we truly desire to live. So if you want to become a deliberate conscious creator who is enjoying the creations and the manifestations that you are experiencing in life, then I invite you to be a part of a very special five-week intensive. You can get all the details at dariuth.com forward slash shift to learn more. You can experience wholeness, personal freedom, expanded states of creativity, confidence, and flow while achieving your goals and flourishing in your unique gifts and talents. After this podcast episode, please head over to dariuth.com forward slash shift to learn more about it. Yeah, you, you shared something with me and I'll read it. You said, um, how do you know, this was the question you were delivering to me to ask you, how do you know that this is your life's calling? But what you wrote was so beautiful and you wrote, uh, it's the purest form of love I've ever experienced, and the world has layers and layers and layers of global trauma that needs to be healed, of which plant medicine is perhaps just one avenue that I strongly believe um, could be a part of that healing under the right conditions. And I would say absolutely. You know, it, it certainly led to you taking massive action uh, at a time where I mean, you you pulled off a lot of almost unimaginable things that you know the rest of us were standing around like, how did you do that, right? Um, but but part of it was 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 a deeper calling. There was a deeper um, desire to be in service, of which it it appears, at least to what I saw and witnessed, was the universe was rushing to support you, right? Rushing to provide. Aww whatever means of support, because you were honoring the calling that was, was coming up for you. And so I say that to say that when we talk about, well, how do we start to, to make these types of changes and they seem so very big, it's like following the calling and following and, and trusting that the purpose that you are now living in can be divinely, not only divinely inspired, but the divine provisions can be put in place. And if on a larger scale, we have leaders and change makers who literally can do some of the things that it might take us common folk a long time to get something done, but they're coming at it from this, this, this place that many of us report 
the shifts and changes that we've experienced because of plant medicine, then perhaps that's where we really start to see the changes be made. I agree. And, um, you know, pl personal transformation leads to global transformation. Nothing can happen on the, per on the global level unless it happens on the personal level. And so I, that's what I believe anyway. And I had to go through that. And to be honest with you, I, I, I'm, I've always been, my demeanor has always been very positive and I come from a place that love always wins and returning from the war and witnessing what I did, um, it did take me a while. I didn't actually know what that term, you know, dark night of the soul meant. And um, I do now. Uh, and I'm so grateful for it because on, I had to go through it. There was a reason. And I loved what the, the phrase you used about the universe rushing to support me. And, uh, and I was, and I had to surrender even deeper <laughs> during that time. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was really tough. Like even it, like, it just was day by day, incrementally by uh, incrementally. And when I did get to the other side, there was this deeper, I wouldn't call it joy, but I would call it a fulfillment and not an ignorance, but an acceptance and um, and also um, a more powerful uh, just inspiration to move forward in a, a more profound way to figure out ways to help. Like I felt stronger and I felt more resilient and I felt, um, yeah, I just felt a deeper call that, wow, this is, uh, this has really opened my eyes and my heart and there has to be a way that we can do more as a collective to really help these situations. War does not solve war. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't. Um, and I am about peace. And, um, and so, yeah, I think, um, I think that's what's leading me to, or, or maybe because these other experiences are coming in my field. And at first I'll go, I don't really, uh, that one's a really tough one to solve. Like the Ukrainian one, some, some of these things are coming in my field, feels like a piece of cake. It's not, but it, but um, some of these other um, war-torn countries have um, even more difficult constraints around them. And I have been figuring out, like cobbling along, just figuring out where there's resources and organizations that can really help and protect and to save um, human life. And it's been um, it's been complex, but also so rewarding to the yeah. point where this is what I want to do. Yeah, this it's you know, and we we certainly are energetically and at this point where we're seeing this raising of consciousness worldwide, and and as a result of that, there yeah. are many more people that are are choosing to discover uh, a higher consciousness, uh, or at least tapping into that and being in that more often. And you don't necessarily need to use plant medicine in order to, it, it works fast, but <laughs> but there's other yeah. modalities, right? There's, there's breath work and, and sound healing and, and a variety of different things. It's just so interesting, however, that the variety of plants and animals and fungi and uh, healing modalities that have been on this planet and earth for centuries and made mm -hmm. available um, are are at a stage where we are we're returning to that and using it more often as mm -hmm. a means of of helping people to get to that place for themselves individually. Absolutely, yeah, and and it's not accessible to everyone. However, nature is, and to your point, nature is so intelligent. And I do feel like the more I learn, the less I know. And, and so it's, it's, um, it's making me even more curious, but then sometimes it's a little disorienting because I'm like, wow, I thought I knew some things and, and I really, I really don't. And so we, we just have to also surrender to that and accept and work with what we do have, but the power and the intelligence of nature is we will never know the yeah. full range and spectrum of that. And yeah. it's absolutely incredible. So um, yeah. I do think there's a lot to learn from nature in that way. I mean, I remember being in the jungle with the Oshawa tribe 
and they were um, taking us on a tour of the jungle and they were showing us various plants and they knew everything about every single blade of grass and leaf and flower. And even though at that time um, we had done like the king of the jungle was the jaguar. And that's a very powerful spirit animal for them that they bring into the ayahuasca ceremonies. And I felt very held during that. We had to do a vision quest where we were literally on a banana leaf for the entire day and fasting before we were to go into ayahuasca. And it was like even wearing deodorant, we were told um, we were invited to not even wear deodorant because it separates us from nature. Mm. And I just that fact alone, I was like, wow, I hadn't thought of it that way. And so there's bugs crawling everywhere and there's, <laughs> but you, you actually, like once you settled into the, into it, like you actually felt, um, you felt one with all of it. And so it really, it and that's really the point. made <laughs> It is the point. Yeah. 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 So, uh, but they, I remember them pointing out uh, a flower and they said that they use it as a uh, connection to the dream world. The dream world for them is the real world mm -hmm. and, um, or there's, it's, it's interchangeable. It's all one. And uh, they had said, um, you know, this is one that we use for some of our guidance with, uh, from our, our spirit guides and they said, but if you, Cuban, you as Westerners would take this, you would actually perish. Um, that's how strong it is. So um, it was really interesting that um, to, to learn that because this tribe, of course, that's they, they don't have any electricity, no water, they, everything they, re, they rely on everything for with nature. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about um, how you even began working with plant medicine now almost, what, 15 yeah. years and, and like what, where were you at in that point of your life and, and, and how was it that you were called and to what medicine and what was that experience? Uh, yeah, sometimes, sometimes it's, it is kind of a mystery of how it happens, but for me, I had recently moved from San Diego to San Francisco, and I was surrounded by a lot of uh, Burning Man uh, community, very conscious community. And I was invited to Burning Man um, probably 10 times before this. So just like medicine work, you have to feel the divine timing for when you uh, move into it. And I never push or I never, I just, you know, I'll invite um, but uh, it's something that you really have to feel the call. And so even Burning Man is a rite of passage. And, uh, and so when I went to Burning Man, uh, the leader of my camp had actually written a book called Tryptamine Palace. And he was one of the most uh, well-known um, practitioners or uh, holders of the medicine, sacred holders of the toad medicine, which is 5-MeO-DMT. And so kind of like you, while I was there, he's like, okay, we're, we're going to do some in our camp here. And I was like, um, I think I'd rather go home and read the book and do my <laughs> research <laughs> and all of that. And so there was this beautiful conference, um, the October after uh, Burning Man. And he, I just felt so blessed. Like at breakfast, the conversations were just like rocket shipping me to another place of, of, of knowledge that I had no idea of. And so um, he had invited me, said, I have an extra ticket to this conference in, in uh, near in the Bay Area, uh, the science of non-duality. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have to tell you, I, I just met folks, um, you know, priests, shamans, practitioners, uh, angels who are like the, um, they're not the holders of the medicine, but they help, they're the helpers. And I would consider um, myself an angel. Um, I don't hold the medicine, but um, I will be an angel for it um, because I hold, hold, I've held space for over 150 ceremonies. And, um, but at that time, it was so brand new to me. And uh, I met some of the most incredible experts around this and, and the transformations that I was hearing about on the personal level. And then what they were talking about of how, like the possibilities and the use cases for future possibilities of how this, these things could change the world in a very respectful and honoring way um, really blew my mind. 
And so I, it's funny, I said to him, I said, okay, I'm ready. And he said, oh, he goes, well, I really want to introduce you to someone who does it very ceremonial. And I pretty much bless everything. Like I'll bless a glass of wine before I drink it. Um, or, you know, just simple things like that. And it changed the, it changes the alchemy and it changes the energy of it. And, um, and so he said, you know, I really want to introduce you to someone who holds, um, holds the medicine and holds a very, very sacred container and holds very, um, specific integration, uh, always makes himself available to anyone because it can really shake you up of like, what am I doing in this world? Right. And what's happening and why are people hurting other people? Because it is all love. Like you really experience that pure love, like you mentioned. So um, he was one of my greatest, uh, probably had the most impact like on my life. Um, I, I say this to my husband and jokingly way, I'm like, I don't know if your engagement topped this was is in the top two or if uh, <laughs> doing the psychedelics was 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 number one because um and we've done it together, which is a really uh profound experience to do as a couple. But um yes, that's how I had first got into it and then um started to uh you know over, go overseas and go into the jungle and really meet the indigenous tribes who uh, been the holders of these medicines for um, for centuries, unbeknownst to me at the time, and um, and then really learning from the originals who uh, I I just hold such reverence for to to this day. And um, and again, we have I, I personally have so much to learn around around this, and I think it can have a profound impact on the world. The '60s kind of shook things up a little bit. And I think um, we can get back there again. I'm really seeing this positive change around, you know, reputable organizations like John Hopkins and uh, Stanford and others who are getting behind like clinical trials around these things. Um, and and I'm going to continue to, uh, you know, just be a stand for um, hopefully in the future that uh, this becomes available in a very, again, honoring way and uh to 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 make change to make real real specific change but i'm personally on a mission for systems change right now i i think we need a new economic system i think we need you know it's unfortunate our powers you know power or economic kind of go together um we have a really major homelessness problem um and you know, people will sometimes just throw money at the problem, but that's not always the way. And so I like to actually stay with people for a longer period of time, like a short, mid and long term plan as they go through integration and they go through life challenges to really be a stand for their highest potential. Yeah. You know, and what I suspect and certainly hope is that um, this as a part of this psychedelics renaissance that is underway, and the use of psychedelics, not only just for therapeutic uh, and medicinal purposes in, in traditional therapy sessions and certainly in the underground and in the jungle, but that when, when we're at a place where more people find safe ceremony, safe practitioners uh, to hold the space for them to actually be with the medicine, and these being people that we talked about earlier, leaders, change makers, people who are at the center of policy change, we will see massive change underway. And yes, it, 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 it you know, I can't, I, I, I'd be willing to bet everything on it because that's, uh -huh. what, that's what the medicine wants, right? So it's like, that's what consciousness wants. And so, you know, it to, for people to have these experiences and they walk away like you and I, forever changed thinking hey, this is not just about me around here these days it's you know I'm here as as a part of the collective um, to to share love and give love and be a part of it like wherever we can do that in whatever spaces we're in I think is going to be very important but at its core the medicine has such an intelligence that when you, when used and when people actually are able to follow the calling or follow the message whatever that comes through oh my goodness imagine more people in this space right basically that's yeah. that's where i was going with that long train of thought 
Oh, it's, it's absolutely that, you know, the powerful thing, uh, you know, in my mind is that I extend, you know, when I had hosted, um, or as an angel hundred, you know, a lot of these ceremonies, um, my intention and selfish or not selfish was to introduce to it, to people who I knew, like anytime they experience something that they truly love, or they know will make a positive impact on the world, I know that they will share it. And they'll share it in a way that's a positive way. And so um, I've seen that just like small changes, but I, I'm just, I'm a stand for that happening on a larger scale. And with, um, I mean, we have the resources in the world. If you think about the large organ companies that we have and the significant um, leaders that we have, uh, yeah, if it gets it, you know, into the right um, hands, we can make a significant difference and it starts within us first yeah. and then we can come together like even if i think about um there's an article that comes out every year and it's the forbes top 100 most influential most powerful women and i'll you know and and i'll talk about women for a moment but you know it's, it's men or women but this specific article talks about all of the major philanthropic efforts that these women um, are a part of. And what I noticed, I've been actually studying this list for quite a while. And what I noticed is that every single one of these women are doing incredible things in the world, not only with maybe the companies that they run or the economic forum or the countries that they run, et cetera, but also um, these um, philanthropic foundations, for example, are all individual they're all separate. And I think that we have an opportunity to actually come together, like for, imagine if these hundred women were friends and could come together and maybe for a week could really get into their, their mind, body, soul. And again, it doesn't have to be with medicine work. It could be through breath work or other means, and then take a week to really go deep into a think tank about systems change um, you know, what, what could transpire as a result of that, if we really had a specific, um, you know, goals around desired outcomes. Yeah. And so it surprised me that, you know, 85% of those women are mothers and yet 17,000 children die every day of starvation. Mm. And so we have the resources yeah. and I was hoping that the pandemic would, I, you know, there's no question all of us thought about, thought deeper about what is most important during the pandemic. Um, however, I think the division between wealth and poverty uh, increased. Yeah. And, um, and I don't know the 100% the data, but I, you know, I was hoping that um, there would be this, that would be this shakeup for us, that would dictate maybe us coming together a little bit closer as a collective to, to make that change, because we can't, we just can't do it alone. Yeah, no, it will take all of us. And, and I will say that I, I, you know, coming out of COVID and now looking back in these last almost two years, that there have been major shifts that people have taken as a result of it. And then at the same time though, I think we've also seen equally a continued disconnect. And um, I believe a lot of that has to do with, with our inability to even have the essentials. You know, you and I were talking about how important it is um, that that children are nurtured and loved and protected. Mm -hmm. And when a child is abused and neglected and um, in an angry, hostile situation, they, it's inevitable that, that that becomes a part of their lives. And you said it earlier, yeah. hurt people hurt people. And when we are at a place where heal, more healed people are healing others or helping other people to usher in their own healing is when we really see the changes begin to happen. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. And I think that um, it takes uh, strength to break the cycle. Yeah. And, uh, and, and but we have to empower our children to be able to do that and to yet to still spread their wings and be expressive yeah. and be their own people, yeah. uh, yet also um, show a really good example of what conscious community and really deeply means. Yeah. And so that um, we don't continue to repeat these cycles, which yeah. we've seen in history. 
Right, and and so much of that with children is it's not their responsibility. You know, they 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 no. they, they don't yeah. you know, and and so it's really about having if there's not uh, if the if their household is in that position um, and they don't have places to turn that we have conscious community around in some way that can step in and assist in in, in some uh, some way. So that is also my hope is that we really see um, the 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 type of change that happens with the individual happening earlier, not when they become adults like you and I and start questioning what is this and what, what's my purpose and where am I going, but that young right. people are, are, have the, the wherewithal to explore that and to um, you know, be on this earth to love and play and, and be honored for who they are and not necessarily subject to abuse and neglect. Um, big conversation, certainly for another time. I want to point out a couple of things for those of you all who are listening and, and you might be interested in, in having a uh, plant medicine experience, journey, um, questioning yourself, how do I begin? Where do I start? What do I do? We have a free resource that is available um, that is at the website, thewayofthehealer.com. We also will put that in the show notes of this page, as well as if you're watching on YouTube. Um, it is a incredible resource that was developed not by, well, I developed it, but with the help of many people who have been in this space for a long time, um, working with psychedelics, integration coaches, shamans, practitioners, you'll see that they're, that it is authored by many people for whom I'm very grateful for. So uh, you can find that. It also helps you to uh, really get clear about why and setting the attention and understanding. Of course, we go through prep, which is really important uh, in making sure that you're prepared, um, giving you some insight around certain experiences and integration, 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 uh, which is yeah. very important. Yeah. Times a hundred. <laughs> times a hundred. Times a hundred. And, and I talk about it all the time on this show because, you know, I'm still integrating and it's like, and I've had oh, lots yeah. of plant uh, medicine experiences and, and um, none big as of late uh, and don't need it because I'm still integrating from the last one. Exactly. Uh-huh. I understand that. Yeah, yeah. it's funny. But one of my most powerful ones. I'm like, I think I might be good for life. I don't, you know. We'll I, not, I'm like, I, you know, I, you know, I someone asking me this like ayahuasca. I'm like, well, you know, my mother asked me this question once when I first shared it with her, and she said, "Well, could you? Is that something you might get addicted to?" I'm like, "Mom, no. It tastes awful. No. It's not something you will ever, you know. You, it, no, it's that. Trust me, that's not something you would ever find yourself addicted to. <laughs> Maybe the feeling, but even that, you learn." Through through integration to call that, at least I have, into my life. Yeah. And so, yeah, uh, <laughs> that wouldn't be the case. Well, so, But just as a reflection to you um, and just how you have taken these experiences and brought them, um, you know, the awareness more powerfully into the world, I really just want to honor you for that as well. And um, we're partners in this together. And, um, and yeah, let's it's, it's, it's exciting to see where it will unfold. And that's the mystery of the feminine as well, yeah. is, is where and how and what uh, will unfold and to trust along the way, but set intentions, but to still trust. Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, before we wrap up, this is one of the final questions I like to ask everyone, um, because I know I'll preface it with this is that, you know, when I came up with the title, The Way of the Healer, um, this was about the way, the, the life, the experience of a healer. Uh, but it's also about the way that people find their way to their own healing is that healers obviously are there to support and guide and 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 be there and to honor uh, and yet the true healer is the person themselves who is choosing to heal themselves so i'd love to ask the final question which is what for you would define the way of the healer oh i think we had a little glitch Oh, okay. I'll, I'll, um, just in case that question didn't get asked, uh, that final question. So what for you would define the way of the healer? The way of the healer. I kind of, it cut out when uh, at the first part. So in terms oh, I'll of my start own over personal... then. Let me, yeah, let me, let me just rephrase all of that. Cause I think part of that was okay. so that you have some reference to it. So when I uh -huh. first 
When I first decided that I wanted this docu-series, the documentary, the podcast to be called The Way of the Healer, this was more than just looking at healers themselves and all of the fascinating healers that exist in the world and the way they are and how they've come to honor their calling to heal. It's also about the way we heal our others because ultimately uh, the healers are there to assist us, but we are our best healers when we come home to ourselves and we are our best healers. So my question, and this is something I love to ask each of my guests, is if you could define for yourself what the meaning or the definition of the way of the healer is. Mm, great question. Um, yeah, I think it is very unique for every single person. And if I talked about myself and the journey, uh, it certainly had a lot of twists and turns along the way. Um, however, uh, because of um, the deep calling I felt when I first experienced the medicine, I knew that it was something that I had to be a stand for and to share with others. And so um, the way continues and uh, um, I guess the way for myself is it was really going through, you know, to trust that, like my fertility journey, the fact that it had been uh, 10 years of many ups and downs and peaks and valleys and being able to handle those more gracefully during that time. Um, and now I actually am just even making yourself available can be one of the greatest gifts to someone. Mm -hmm. And so I don't proclaim myself as a healer. However, I do make myself available for those who are going through various challenges in their life and, um, and hold space for them in any way that they specifically need. And, um, and so I'll continue to do that. And it's only because I went through my own personal transformation, really, that I was that I'm now able to hold space for them. Yeah. So um, it's listening really deeply. It's not judging. It's um, meeting them where they are, yet, um, you know, sharing invitations to other opportunities or experiences and um, and just being a stand for them, for their for, for them, again, just being their highest selves. Um, yeah. So that's how I would define it. Yeah. Well, I, I would say, my friend, that qualifies you as a healer. <laughs> uh, healed people helping others to heal. And certainly your bravery, your courage, and your commitment to supporting uh, the people in Ukraine and, 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 and following that is, um, is beautiful to witness. And I am I'm forever in awe and inspired by you and um, and certainly our friendship and uh, you're assisting me in my introduction to this way so thank you <laughs> you're welcome you're very welcome yeah. you felt the divine call <laughs> i did i absolutely did i i did feel the calling and then i needed somebody to talk to about it it was you so <laughs> yes, <laughs> absolutely right. yes Just yeah, definitely. So, well, with that, we will wrap up for everybody watching and listening. Thank you so much uh, for being a part of our day and a part of this conversation. I invite you to please, whatever podcast platform you're listening to, to please subscribe. Certainly, if you're watching on YouTube, do me a huge favor and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so that you are notified about each and every episode and leave a comment. I reply to all of the comments. Uh, it's really important that we include you as part of our conversations for change. So thanks so much for being here. And my friend, I love you dearly. Thank you so much for being here. I love you, Daria. Thank you. And, and so um, as we look at this definition or meaning of the way of the healer, um, how would you um, describe that for yourself? Mm. Uh, yeah, the way of the healer for me, uh, personally has had a lot of twists and turns, but I think in terms of going forward, a message that I've really been carrying is to share my story is to share with others 
and um, and hope that that um, brings some kind of inspiration or or even permission for others to share their stories, because stories are so powerful. And learning that from some of the indigenous tribes has been extraordinary and then bringing that into our everyday world. And so for me, I think the way of the healer is just even voicing uh, the uh, the way in which I was able to heal myself and therefore move into other aspects of being available for others as they go through their healing journeys. And, uh, and yeah, just sharing, sharing our stories because um, no one should suffer alone. No one should suffer alone. Did you know this podcast is a part of an even larger docu-series? Yep, there's an entire documentary underway called The Way of the Healer, where I introduce you to extraordinary women from around the world who are transforming lives with the use of plant medicine and psychedelics. You can learn more about it at thewayofthehealer.com. Thanks for being a part of my day and for listening. Be sure to check out the website, thewayofthehealer.com, for more details, useful tools and links, free resources, and more. Disclaimer, the Way of the Healer Conversation for Change podcast and its host and guests are providing this information for educational purposes only. We do not condone nor condemn the selling, purchase, or use of any substances that are considered outside of legal acquisition or usage. We encourage discretion and safety when involving yourself or others with substances and activities that are deemed illegal by your official local government laws and agencies. It is your responsibility to research and know applicable laws.